It's, it gives me jacked. Let's go. Lord, thanks for a great privilege and honor to open your word. We don't take it lightly. It is the very word from heaven. Playbook, your heart on pages. And we see this beautiful theme of Jesus all throughout all 66 books. Your heart of grace, your heart of mercy, redemption. Thank you, God, we celebrate your goodness. And now we ask, by faith, you would get me out of the equation. By your spirit, you would speak through your scriptures, two hearts, two souls, change us forever for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, what kind of music have you been listening to lately? What kind of music have you been listening to lately? By the way, where's my Apple Music people? Raise your hand real quick, Apple Music, okay. Good, good. Uh, Spotify people? We are house divided, my goodness. Uh, Pandora, anybody? Pa look at my people. Pan I thought Pandora was dead, but the nine o'clock, they were talking about Pandora. I was like, okay, revival may be happening in the music world. Um, how about CDs? Anybody, CDs? People still listen to CDs. This is, and you're a young guy. Okay, all right, I'll give it to you. How about radio? Okay, that's the biggest test right here. You still listen to the radio? K-Love, okay. Okay, a little shout out to K-Love. I, I love it. I think, I think music is powerful, don't you? Anybody? I mean, what we, we bring into our mind, our heart, through music, I think, is super powerful. I was thinking about the power of music in movies, and how many went to the Top Gun number two movie, by the way? Like, okay. So just imagine like rolling into that movie without like the danger zone or whatever the name of the, well, you know, duh. like if it was just silent, you'd be like, bro, this is, the, okay, whatever. But all of a sudden you put a soundtrack to it and that's powerful. The, the movie is absolutely, how about Rocky IV? Any Rocky IV fans up in here? Come on now. Eye of the Tiger, if Eye of the Tiger wasn't going on when Rocky was training to take out the Russian, the dude wouldn't have made it. Am I right? <laughs> it's powerful. It's powerful. It sets the mood. Uh, a lot of times at dinner, we play jazz music at dinner. It just sets a vibe. You know, like, I have a date with my, I'm an empty nester now. It's great. I can eat some Italian food and put Italian romantic jazz music on. What does it do? Hey, just it sets the mood. Or when you go work out, you're not you're not rocking Barry Manilow as you're like pumping up the biceps, right? Like there's there it sets a mood. There's something that happens. It messes with the mind. I'm telling you, I don't know what it is. Anybody with me? Like the the music I choose messes with my mind, and it speaks messages. I was speaking to work. I was working out at this gym, and and they had this country music playing. And I'm not a big, any, where's my country people? I'm not a big country guy. I'm not a hating on it. I, every now and again, I might listen. But this song w went on and, and I was listening to it. I'd never heard it before. Some of you sinners might've heard this song, but, but it was like, it was, uh, a. <laughs> so, so, okay. it was uh, one margarita, two margarita, three margarita, shot. I was like, oh, dang. And then all of a sudden, like, it kept on going, talking about once you get to the, you know, third margarita and the shot, you just, you just, you're just gone, you know? And I was like, oh, that's preaching a message. Now, Nothing wrong with one margarita every now and again, you know, but all of a sudden, and I was like, oh, that's, that's preaching a message. It's preaching the music. It gets into my mind and it speaks. Music's connected to memories. Isn't it funny how like certain scents and songs bring you right back to a certain place? You guys know what I'm talking about? My, my parents, well, my mom specifically, every Saturday we had to do chores and there was this huge record player. It was gigantic. I mean, you get spoiled. You, have, you can pull any music out of your back pocket. This thing was like, it started about right here. And it was like, it was long. It probably went to about right here. It was this tall. And you put these records on it. You know, anybody, oh, more my, more my, folk, more my seasoned saints up in here. You know what I'm talking about? It's called like this, what was it called? A record player box thing. What? Console. Console, thank you. Thank you, thanks for your help. It was the console. And so I would have to dust that thing. And it took me like an hour to dust like a record player. It was like, 
put this little thing on, and my favorite jam was Nothing But a Hound Dog by Elvis. <laughs> Every Saturday. So, so when, when I hear that song, I go right back to Dustin on Saturdays. Anybody? <laughs> Should I bring you to, oh, I'll bring you to one more, just one more. Can, you, you all right? I'm just trying to prove a point that music's powerful, right? Where are my people in the family room? You all with me right here? Both, okay, right over there. So, Def Leppard, pour some sugar on me. Remember that one? Where is it, where's that? It brings you right back to a place. For me, I was in eighth grade, and my brother was driving a Dodge Ram Charger, and we were playing baseball all summer. It brings me right back there. Some of you are like, you are old, huh? It's powerful. You were in high school, too. So you're really old then. Is that kind of what you're saying? Okay. So let's play along a little bit just to prove this point, how, how music's powerful. Uh, let's do fill in the blank. And I, I heard this song recently. It brought me, I hadn't heard it in years. You gotta fight. Bum, bum, for your right. Bum, bum, two. Fight. See, like. <laughs> you, see, you, you hadn't heard Beastie Boys in two decades and you, it just came right back. What am I proving? Music powerful. Or, <laughs> uh, I forget this one. How does it start? This is just a little song I wrote. <laughs> you might want to know it note for note. Don't worry. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Hold on, that was too quick. You got to <laughs> let, it, let, it, let it slide for a second. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, see, there you go. <laughs> What is that? I'm trying to, you're like, can you get to the text? <laughs> trying to prove a point is this. It's powerful. And what you and I, by our free will choice, allow to settle into our mind through music will change our life. I actually, my subtitle of this message, it was like, you know, check your playlist, but change your music, change your, change your life. And that's a little drastic, I know. But for me, it was true. It was super true. I came to Christ in 1997, in the middle of a drug deal, in the middle of a snowstorm. And for a year, I kept on listening to Tupac, Biz, you know, Big E, Easy E, Metallic, I mean, all this stuff. And I was like, dude, I love music. Like, I just won't listen to the message, you know, I just like the vibe. I like the, you know, the beats. I you had these subwoofers in the back of my car. I'm sorry. And, and God just kept on going, it's not probably gonna be the best for you. There's something a little bit better. And the, the tracks that are running in your brain need to be transformed. And I'm like, no. So for a year, I was like, no. And I was listening to like a weird preacher like me talking about the power of music. I'm like, no. So a year later, I'm at a training camp and I had that big old fat case logic book full of CDs. I don't know if you guys remember those things. And in between practices, someone came and jacked my, all my music, my movies, PlayStation games, everything, gone. God's like, you know what? If you don't want to be obedient, I'm going to help you out by my grace and remove the music from your mind so you can have a different message flowing in. And I replaced that with like Ron Cannoli. You're like, who is that? And Maseo knows who I'm talking about, one of my favorite worship leaders, old Ron Cannoli bringing down the house with some powerful worship music. <laughs> what changed? What I was bringing into my mind, you know, we say this all the time, whoever you feed is going to lead. L let, me, let me say it another way. Whoever's in your ear is going to steer. And the messages are powerful. And, and the thing that's so powerful about music, again, I just proved to you, you haven't heard a song in 20 years. And immediately it came back. Why? Because it gets in there. And I think it's God-ordained. So today, we're gonna look at this power of music in three different areas, if you guys are ready. Number one, in ministry, you're gonna see David, King David, the, one of the first things he tries to do is bring the Ark of the Covenant, which represented the presence of God, back to Jerusalem where it needed to be. And you remember, at first, he tried to do it his own way, put it on a cart, the ox stumbled, and Uzzah tried to grab it and got, zing, you know, he's like, hold on had to go back to the Bible, figure out how to do it with the Levites, with the poles, and carry it, eventually he comes back. And David, he knows the power of music so much, 
He hires an entire staff. Their only job is to minister through music to God day and night. Some of y'all are like, why do you hire all these people, you know, and have this huge team for music? I'll tell you why, because music is powerful. So ministry. Number two, military. And I'm gonna show you a story in 2 Chronicles 20 that will blow your mind. This homie named King Jehoshaphat, surrounded by these enemy armies, instead of putting the, the key warriors on the front line, he puts the, king, the key worshipers on the front line. I'm like, what are you doing? And you'll see it as they sing, as they make music to God, God shows up, confuses the enemy, and they win the war. And I'm wondering how many people need to win the war in their mind today. Finally, number three, music is medicine. There's a lot of depressed people right now, anxiety, stress, taking over our world can I tell you, and you know what? It might not change the circumstance, but it very much can mend the mind. Powerful music. So let's start in 1 Chronicles 16. You guys ready? Say, I'm ready. 1 Chronicles 16, let's start in verse four. 1 Chronicles 16, four. David appointed the following Levites, these leaders, they were from a certain tribe of Levi, to lead the people in worship before the ark of the Lord to invoke his blessings, to give thanks, and to praise the Lord, the God of Israel. Asaph, the leader of this group, sounded the cymbals. I love watching my kid Zion up here just sound the cymbals, man. It's the best thing in the world. I remember when he first got taught, like people invested in him playing the drums, and then one day he played with Remedy Drive when he was like 12, and he just came alive, and he's been serving the Lord through ministry, crashing cymbals ever since. So cool. Second to him was Zechariah, followed by J.L., and a lot of other names that are really hard to pronounce. You try. Uh, they played the harps and lyres. The priests, Benaniah and Jehaziel, played the trumpets regularly before the Ark of God's Covenant. Now pause there real quick. Do you see the power of this? He is getting an entire team together. That's their job minister to the Lord through music. And there's been people that have asked me, why spend so much resource or why do you do what you do? And let me just say, I'm just trying to be biblical, man. I'm trying to walk in David's footsteps. And I, I would just like to say thank you to our entire worship production team. This week, they worked on this sound system this whole entire week to get it ready for you so you can minister to the Lord through music. So powerful, so powerful. There, there's, a, there's a verse in Psalm, jot this down. Psalm 135, verse three. And I know I'm going out of order a little bit, but you gotta jot this down. Psalm 135, three says, praise the Lord for the Lord is good. Celebrate his lovely name with what? With music. And then in Psalm 150, verse five, I love this. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Thanks, Zion. Thanks, all of our drummers. Praise him with what? With loud, clanging cymbals. Someone told me we only have four earplugs in the back, and I was like, oh, man. So, and I like to celebrate loud. Why? Why? I like to praise him for what he's done, dude. I'm the chief of sinners and I'm going to heaven because of what Jesus did on the cross. And sometimes I like to just unleash and be loud. Why is it so loud? Go to a Nebraska game and see what the decibel level between a Nebraska game and love church is. And if you complain about the Nebraska game and the young men with the tight pants and it's so loud there, then you can complain at love church. But, but man, listen, why, why? I'm excited. I'm, I'm jacked. What are you loud about, by the way? What you're really passionate about. David's like, yo, can you imagine David, by the way? David, little shepherd boy, stay with me on this. He's a shepherd dude getting his shepherd on with all these sheep in the pasture, stinky sheep. This prophet comes to his house and it comes to his dad and says, hey, the Lord sent me here to anoint the next king of Israel. That'd be like if you're in Walmart in the back stocking shelves, all of a sudden the president comes in. We're looking for the next president. 
And the prophet comes. And Eliab, I think, is this, like, one of the, the, the sons, the oldest son, looks all good. And goes through, and, and the prophet's like, is it that guy? No. Is it that guy? And he looks at David's dad. He's like, is there anybody else? Like, no one, no one is called to be the king. And his dad's like, uh, actually, the, the young one's just out taking care of sheep. And the prophet Samuel says, go get him. And he comes back, and, and, and what happens? He anoints little Davy as king. And Dave's like, what just happened? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, he grows up, and he becomes the king. And you know what? King David didn't always do things right. In fact, what did he do? One day, he should have been at war. What was he doing? He's chilling on, the, on the, like the top of the roof of his house. I'm like, oh, who's that? She's a hottie. There's bath, Sheba taking a bath. Oh, go get her. Gets her pregnant, tries to cover it up by killing Uriah, one of his homies. Talk about like gratitude and yet God would forgive him of that and the Bible says he's a man after God's own heart. Are you kidding me? And you know what he does? He just loses his mind and says, we're gonna praise God. We're gonna minister to him with loud music. Why? Because he's passionate about the grace of God, the mercy of God, the favor of God. When I look at my singers, I, should, I shouldn't say my God singers that he delegated to his church that I have the privilege of working with and the musicians, when I see them on stage, it's not a show, but it's authentic worship back to God. They're ministering to God. Guess what happens? I get ministered to. So thank you. Thank you for your humility. Think about Maseho. Like how, how did Maseho from Africa land? I remember when we, I think when we first met you were in one of Denise's classes. Like how did that happen? And now you're coming out talking about, I oh, thank God. I would too to see God's grace in your life. Sorry, I told you, man. You were supposed to pray for me to, to chill out today. <laughs> I'm trying to chill. I'll just give you a couple other verses for the sake of time from this chapter. In fact, the, let's look at verse seven because what David does, he assembles the team and then he gives a set list to Asaph and the rest of his, his people, his musicians, and he writes this song, and you can jot it down. It's part of three Psalms, 105, Psalm 96, and Psalm 106. It's a conglomeration of those Psalms written right here. This is the song that he wanted to sing when they brought the ark back into Jerusalem. Verse seven, on the day David gave to Asaph and his fellow Levites the song of thanksgiving to the Lord. Ministry to the Lord. Verse eight, listen to this, give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. That's what we've done this morning, haven't we? He's good. Let the whole world know what he has done. Don't be silent about it. By the way, I love the, the baptizees when they share their story. What are they doing? They're just letting the world know, right? Whether you know it or not, you just did that through Africa, India, everywhere. You just shared of God's goodness. I love it. Verse nine, sing to him. Yes, sing his praises. Tell everyone about his wonderful deeds. Exult in his holy name. That's a pretty wild word, exult. Go study that and just marinate on that. Rejoice, you who worship the Lord. Search for the Lord, verse 11, for his strength. Continually seek him. And verse 12, remember the wonders he has performed. Oh, I love that. Remember, isn't it good sometimes just to come in here and remember even in your worst days, even though the circumstance didn't change, he was there for you. And you remember how far you've come. He's been with you all the way. Sometimes it's just good to remember in worship. The last couple of verses of chapter 16, I'll just go right to chapter 16, verse 36. It says this, praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who lives from everlasting to everlasting. That's a wild thought. And all the people shouted. What did they shout? They shouted, amen. And they praised the Lord. There's an interesting word for worship or ministry to the Lord that I wanted to just draw your attention. There's a variety in the Bible, but there's one called shaka. Everybody say shaka, shaka. And it's, it's worship or minister or serve or, or you know what a good translation is? 
bow down to the Lord. And, and that's something that's super interesting to me because a lot of times I put Todd as God and sometimes in worship, it's all of a sudden I bow down, a shakha, and I worship God and all of a sudden I get back into a place of humility and reverence and trust in his sovereignty and it changes me. So, so it's ministry. So music, number one, powerful for ministry. Ministry to the Lord, and that's what David's doing. He is, he's solidifying his music ministry for the whole entire nation. Can you imagine if the United States, that's all throughout the airwaves, maybe the radio, okay, like everybody, you, you only had one choice. You just listened to K-Love all day. That'd be wild. If our president just goes, from here on forth, you will only, no, sorry, that'd be weird. Okay, moving on. Number two, military. Okay, bust a right in your Bibles to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And I wanna point out this story that's powerful when it comes to music in the military. And you're like, what? I'm just gonna read it. This is, again, King Jehoshaphat, one of Israel's good kings, one of, um, one of the few, and he's surrounded by these enemy armies. Second Chronicles, let's, chapter 20, verse two. Look at verse two. Messengers came, and they told Jehoshaphat, a vast army from Edom is marching against you from beyond the Dead Sea. Underline marching against you. They are already at Hazazon Tamar. Jehoshaphat was terrified, I underline that, by this news and begged the Lord for guidance. He also ordered everyone in Judah to begin fasting. By the way, when you find yourself in various trials, one of the best things, just begin fasting and, and looking to the Lord. But a couple things in this text struck me. Number one, a vast army is marching against you. Let me ask you this question. Do you feel like that's your life right now? A vast army of creditors is marching against you because of debts that you've allowed to rise? A vast army of diagnoses of disease mounting against you? I was thinking of a couple things. One, in our small group, by the way, anybody involved in a small group here, can you just raise your hand? This is, thank you, you can put them down. Our heart at this church, the church would never get bigger from four to 14. And there's something powerful about the small group. We work through the scriptures together. We get each other's back. We pray for one another. And our fearless leader, when we start our group, he'll say, do you have any prayer requests? And a dude in our group has a friend with a six-year-old who had leukemia, beat it, and now the leukemia came back. Can you, be, can you imagine being parents of a six-year-old with leukemia and it doesn't look good? You start thinking about the vast army that's surrounding those parents. And so the privilege we have as a small group is to lean in and pray for those, pray for you know, healing, but for the, for the family in the middle of the battle. And I'm not sure where you're at, but maybe you're like Jehoshaphat, you're like terrified. The Bible says he's terrified. What am I gonna do? You ever been in that place where your back is against the wall and you've tried everything, but you're like, you're, I'm out of options. I guess I should look at God now. If I was God, sometimes I'd be like, dude, really? What? I mean, you're waiting this long? You're gonna, nah, just go ahead and put your, but isn't he so gracious? He's like, oh, you finally looked to me, okay. Watch, skip down verse 21. You gotta see how this story, what happens in this story. I mean, again, he's overwhelmed. The army's literally, the military is coming to take him out and his people, he's leading. In verse 21, after consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. Wait, hold on. You just hired worshipers to be on the front line? Don't we got some warriors? You're putting people to sing? What's that gonna do? Well, 
tell you, this is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord, his faithful love endures forever. Verse 22, at that very moment, they began to sing and give praise. The Lord caused the enemies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir to start fighting among themselves. The armies of Moab and Ammon turned against their allies from Mount Seir and killed every one of them. After they had destroyed the army of Seir, they began attacking each other. And look at verse 24, this is crazy. So when the army of Judah, they arrived at the lookout point in the wilderness, all they saw were dead bodies lying on the ground as far as they could see. What a sight. Not a single one of the enemy had escaped. Earlier in the chapter, it said, Jehoshaphat, don't freak out. And he told the people, the prophet told Jehoshaphat and the people, he said, don't do anything, just wait on the Lord. Just wait to see what he'll do. And I started thinking, you know, I don't know if we're gonna be surrounded by a physical army. Like if the Canadians are gonna just come around and you know, surround you, like your neighborhood and take you out. They're pretty nice people, I guess. You know, it's like, but, but, but I was thinking about the war in our minds. The attacks that are happening. It's been said that Christianity and church isn't a cruise liner, it's being more like on a battleship. And there's a spiritual war going on for souls. And I know that sounds real spiritual and deep and weird, but it's true, read your Bible. There's heaven, there's hell, there's good, there's evil. There's, there's an enemy of our souls trying to take us out. You wonder why like, you're having a tough time in your marriage. Your, your spouse isn't your enemy. There's someone behind that. I got an email this week, and it's a guy that, it's a cool dude, I like him. And he, he, I think it's the enemy that's trying to divide stuff. He's talking about Todd Doxon and Love Church dividing our community. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm like the, less, the least divisive person in the world. Some of y'all have the gift of division. Like, it's just not a gift that I have. <laughs> if you look at my strength finders, it's belief and harmony. Try having those gifts together. And then I start thinking, you know, okay, I see what's happening here. If, if the community can believe that love church is out to get them and divide, then he can keep people away from hearing the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and change lives and change lives and more lives. And so I started thinking about it. I was like, you know, I need some music. So I went and lifted weights. It's a, that's a good thing, by the way. Just go lift weights next time that you're really like working things out and then put skillet in, okay? I talk about the power of music. Uh, specifically the song, Standing in the Storm, okay? And I just wanna read this for you. I promise I won't sing it. Go get it yourself, skillet, their new album. Mike wants me to sing it, maybe a portion of it, okay? I'm standing in the storm like never before. The pressure builds around me. Let the wind surround me, whatever comes. I'm not giving up, fearless as a lion, not afraid of dying. I still got some life in me. So, that was embarrassing. I could just picture if my kid in Ames is like, Dad, stop singing. Okay, I will. But what did this do for me? It was an eruption of music that, that was powerful in my soul. It wasn't pointing fingers or getting judgmental about when people say lies or connect things wrongly about me. It's praying for that and a protection around this church in my heart so we don't divide, but then we, we build bridges so people can receive Christ. And I'm like, ah, I'm not moving in the storm. And I'm surrounded, but you know what? I'm like Jehoshaphat, just let the Lord do what he wants to do. It was so cool. I had a face-to-face -face conversation. I said, man, please forgive me if that's how that came off. It's not my heart. Will you forgive me? Clarified my heart. And he's like, man, okay, I thought that was true. And I just needed to know that. There's something powerful about that. You, 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 what happens? The, the enemy's dismantled. And everything changes. The last one I wanna share with you Man, this is so good. Let's go ahead and bust a left to First Chronicles, or excuse me, First Samuel 16. This is pretty powerful because I don't know about you, but the epidemic of depression and anxiety and stress, I mean, it's, it's at a whole nother level. First Samuel 16, and I wanna end with this idea of medicine. Oh man, I forgot this. 
Okay, I'm gonna jot it down under military, write down Acts 16. I'm just giving you homework because I don't have time to break it down. That's when Paul and Silas were jailed in Philippi because they freed this slave girl who's being pimped out to make money for these dudes because she was demon possessed. Paul cast out the demon, they got mad, they threw him in jail. And instead of having a pity party, he had a praise party and in the, in the, in the earthquake went off and the jail cell broke out. And now the jailer ended up getting saved and his whole household. So go read that in your spare time, Acts 16. Okay, medicine. Anybody lately been losing sleep or having a tough time getting out of bed from time to time? This is for you. This is specifically for you. And I don't know what it is. I used to sleep like a baby man, this whole week, I think it's like God going, I just want you to get into people's lives where they really are. I didn't have one night of sleep where I slept the entire night. And that was rare for me. And I think it was good because I think this is gonna help some of you that if you're really honest, there's days I don't even wanna make it out of bed. I wanna roll over and just be done. King Saul, as I mentioned, the very first king of Israel, had this problem. He was struck, now the Bible will say, by the Lord with a spirit of depression. And man, I'm not a theologian, I can't figure all that out. I just wanna work on a spirit of depression that's from the enemy on this, okay? He, he gets it, and his, his homies are like, bro, the only thing that's gonna break that spirit of depression is some music, is a good melody. I'm like, that's what sometimes I need. And so I wanna give you my secret weapon. (laughs) That's why I sing a lot, because the attack for my mind, I need some medicine for my mind. Anybody need some medicine for, for your mind? 1 Samuel 16, verse 14. Ooh, this is good. 1 Samuel 16, 14. Now, the spirit of the Lord had left Saul Interesting. And the Lord sent a tormenting spirit that filled him with what? With depression and fear. I don't know how many times I've heard, I'm stressed out. I can't put, keep it together. I don't even want to move, right? That's where Saul was. So some of Saul's servants said to him, a tormenting spirit from God's troubling you. Let us find a good what? A good musician to play the guitar wherever... <laughs> Whenever the tormenting spirit troubles you, he will play soothing music and you will soon be well again. I read an article and it said that the US Preventative Services Task Force now recommends for the first time ever that children and teens be screened for anxiety and depression at their yearly physicals before they go to school. This is why this hits me. I remember the days, man, where the kids were out playing on this, in the streets and you know, just there, there, there was zero, I mean, there was very, very little. And now what they suggest is because of this, the huge increase in social media that now kids are in that and now they're overcome with depression and anxiety. And it just breaks my heart. And that's the little kids. And then all of a sudden, and then you grow old, and it just seems like it just gets worse and worse. You have more responsibilities. You're trying to figure out stuff like, why am I here on this planet? And all of a sudden, now you're overcome and overwhelmed. What did his advisors say? Go find a musician that can just rock the heart, man. Because music is powerful, it's medicine at times. So his advisors, they go find this, this young dude, fresh, fresh from the pastures, from shepherding sheep, and it just so happens this guy's name is what? Oh, David. They go and find David, and, and the Bible says that anytime that spirit of depression comes on, they'd call for Dave. Dave would just come in. He was an excellent musician, songwriter. He'd just start leading you know, little lead lines and little soft tones, and all of a sudden, the spirit would fly. You guys wanna see it? It's, it's verse, it's the last verse in the chapter, 23. So good. 
Whenever, he, whenever the tormenting spirit from God troubled Saul, David would play the harp, then Saul would feel better and the tormenting spirit would go away. Music is medicine. And what I've found is a lot of times the circumstances won't necessarily change, but my soul changes as I sing. And I wanted to help you with that because I don't know where you're at with music these days. I'm gonna share one last story and I'm gonna give you just a quick bit of homework. You guys okay with that? And then you can go to your brunch and celebrate baptism and all that. I was, uh, every now and again when I'm preparing for a study, I do it throughout the week and months leading up to these. This was on my heart months ago, but this week, every now and again, I'll just ask random people questions that tie to the, the study. And I asked this question to this lady in a public coffee house, you know, and I said, um, I said, if you don't mind, can you just share like what music means to you? She's like, oh my goodness, it means everything. I said, tell me more. She's like, I have five kids. She looked, I have five kids. <laughs> and my husband and I, we replaced a lot of YouTube and TV and a lot of the stuff that was coming into our house and now it's all worship music, that's it. And she said, you wouldn't believe how the household has changed. Elevation music, um, what was it, uh, Maverick City, I would throw in Cody Carnes, that's what I'm rocking right now, Voo Worship and Cody Carnes, just, just blare that and you're, Maybe not blare it, maybe a little jazz in there as well, and just and, and spruce it in. <laughs> but there, there's what happens, it's powerful, it gets into the mind, the message, the heart, the mood, and, and things change. And she said, You know, it's different. I'll give you homework, we'll land the plane. Three words audit. You're like, What audit? audit? I need to talk, talk to my tax professional here. No. Audit your, your Spotify list, your Apple Music, your playlist, whatever playlist you, here's what I would lovingly encourage, okay? This is, ask the Lord. Lord, what song or songs or bands would you like me to prune from my playlist? Or he could just jack your case logic and just you know, <laughs> take everything out. What is he inviting you to prune? Again, not to be, you know, I'm God, you weirdo. Like, it's, it's more of he wants something better, a place to glorify him. Two, buy. Um, I don't know what that means for you. For me, I bought a, blue, a Bluetooth speaker that I put right next to my shower. And why, why is that? Or do something in your car, whatever. Because I shower a lot and I drive a lot. So that, Hope, hopefully you guys shower a lot as well. So things you do regularly, worship, sing, just physically sing. And you're like, dude, I have a terrible voice. You already know that. Invest in this ministry to the Lord. It's medicine. Last thing I would tell you, every now and again, fast. Fast from certain different, I, uh, two weeks ago or three weeks ago, there's this old school worship guy named Keith Green. You got anybody know Keith Green? Where's my, come on, where's my vets? My Wiley vets knowing Keith Green. And I felt the Lord just saying, in your car, you can only listen to Keith Green for a week. And the dude was a hippie worship leader, like just love him. It was healthy for me. And again, this is between you and the Lord. Just a little bit of homework for you as you consider, again, music, it's powerful, amen? Lord, thanks for this message. Thank you that you created us for relationship. You gave us this gift of music, so cool. To be able to, to minister to you with, and I know as we minister to you, you minister to us. It's just how it is. It's this beautiful highway, love of joy, of freedom, gives us perspective, thank you. And, and the, the military, this battle in our mind that's going on, this battle for souls, God, I pray we'd be aware and sing to you, let you lead the medicine. 
I pray specifically for those struggling with depression, anxiety, fear, stress. I pray, God, for just a beautiful prescription of prayer and worship that would set the tone in their hearts, their minds, their houses, our homes, the environments that we're in for your glory. In Jesus' name. Before I say amen, I just wanna, I only have a few moments, but I wanna conclude with an opportunity of response. And I'm not sure who showed up today, but specifically, God gave me one verse to end with. It's found in Psalm 95. You can stand together as well. Psalm 95, verse one, it's, it's the very first verse of this song. And it says this, the writer says, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our what? Of our salvation. And let me just say, if you don't absolutely have to go anywhere right now, if you could just, just pray with us. I understand if you have meetings and different things to get to. It's important. Souls are at stake. I said we're in a spiritual war. This idea of salvation can be a kind of a Christianese type word, but to me, it's like, Man, I am saved. <laughs> Salvation, what am I saved from? I'm saved from being disconnected from God for all eternity, man. It's so powerful. I praise him, the rock of my salvation. And I'm just telling you about my salvation, man. I was talking about depressed and off, disconnected, on my way to hell. A literal, the Bible talks about heaven and hell because of my choices. And, but God in his grace and his perfect timing met me in my truck on the way to a drug deal and said, Todd, it doesn't have to go down like this. I wanna save your soul. If you'll turn to me and I wanna forgive you, I paid the penalty for your sin. Isn't that the beauty of Jesus? Like it, we'd have to clean ourselves up first. He said, I've already done it. The Bible says God's perfect, the rest of us, not so much. That's the perfect picture of the cross when he hung on that cross. It was one hand connecting to a perfect God, holy God, one hand connected, reaching out to humanity, saying, I've already done it. Jesus lived the perfect life. He pays for all sin of all mankind on that cross. In fact, the last words he says, it is finished. He breathed his last. They put him in that tomb. Three days later, you know the story, we celebrated at Easter. He rose from the grave, proving who he is, the one true God that's able to save souls. And he says, come to me. I wanna forgive you. I wanna give you my righteousness. I want relationship. And as Pastor Jim always says, we recognize our need for forgiveness. We turn from our sin. We place our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And we are saved. Now we're in process, but I know where I'm going. Not because of the good I've done, but because of the perfect life and the perfect bloodshed for me. And maybe you grew up in church and you're like, man, I just better do good and I better you know, open the, can I just tell you, place your faith in what Christ has accomplished today. You'll go from hell to heaven one day. You'll begin a loving relationship right now. So church, just begin to pray. If God's speaking to you, you're here, you're like, man, I, I needed to hear that. Or you're joining us online, this is for you as well. In the minute, the band's gonna, speaking of music, they're gonna play a song. It's gonna be a song of invitation. Make your way forward right here as the band plays. I'll lead you in a simple prayer. God, I need your forgiveness. I wanna follow you. I wanna go to heaven one day. I wanna begin relationship though right now. I promise you, your life will change. We'll connect you with some people, give you a Bible, help you as you begin the journey. The choice is yours. God's arm is out. You respond as the band plays. You are good. You can only be good. You can't be anything else. You can't be anything else.
it. I'm proud of you. It's a good move. There's still time if anyone wants to join this young lady here as I was praying. Just now, I, I remember a quote over here from one of the people that were baptized. They said, I moved from being an addict to being free. The other one said something about identity. And maybe this is for you, maybe someone else here, maybe listening online, trying to earn our identity and how we look, what we have, what other people say. There's a beautiful freedom when I can just land in this place. I'm, in your case, a, I'm a daughter of the most high God. I, I'm chosen, I'm accepted, I'm loved. Doesn't matter how I look, what I have, who, what anyone says about me. It's a beautiful freedom. It's possible there's someone else here. So we're not gonna sing any longer, but come now. Come now, be forgiven, set free. Maybe you're struggling with addiction, depression, identity, a lot of issues going on. You give your life to Christ. No, it's not everything's perfect, but you know who you are. You're forgiven, saved. Anybody else? If not, I'm cool just leading you in this prayer. If you're ready out loud after me, just say, Lord God, yep, I open up my heart. I invite you inside yeah. to be my God, to be my savior, to be my friend. Forgive me of all my sin. Yeah. Wash me clean. I've decided today to follow you, Jesus. I'm all in. <laughs> Fill me with your spirit and lead me in a life of love for your glory and to help a ton of people. <laughs> in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Proud of you. Come on, congratulations. Love it. Now listen, as always, I think I mentioned, got some homies with a Bible, and so they just wanna pray for you as you begin the journey. So if you can head that way right now, we'll celebrate with her. So awesome. Wow. Come on, church. <laughs>